Inter-process communication is vital between processes. In the previous videos, we've discussed the importance of pipes and shared memory. You've also seen pipes at work for communicating between processes, and developed some code that has dealt with inter-process communication using pipes. In this video, we're going to talk about a lighter weight inter-process communication mechanism, namely signals. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to explain and define the concept of a signal, explain how a Unix signal can be handled, and you'll be able to see the code which would allow you to construct rudimentary programs that handle a Unix signal. A signal is an inter-process communication mechanism used in Unix for very, very rudimentary inter-process communications. Signal itself is really a short message that is sent to a process or really a group of processes, depending on how many processes we want to send the signal to, that really just contains a number identifying the signal. So we can think of this as an integer going to it. We do not have any data delivered as with a traditional message. It's just basically the number indicating the presence of a uh, value that indicates that the signal has occurred. You can think of a signal as being somewhat similar to an event listener set up in Java. In Java, a user clicks on a button generating an event. We can think about this, in our case, as being a signal. That visible button, in, our ca in the case of Java, is a J button object, and what ends up happening is an action event object is sent to the listener. This listener implements this button handler. In our case, basically, instead of having a button handler, we have something called a signal handler. Let's take a look at an example of a signal handler at work. Typically the first place we see signals in use is in the keyboard actions. Here we see a very simplistic piece of code. Basically this piece of code will loop right here between 0 and 59, printing out the time once per second, sleeping one second in between. So I can take this code, oops, like so, and start it running. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. And as you have probably done before, if I send it a control C command, that process will stop running because we will essentially abort the process by interrupting it. If I start the process running again, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth, and I send a control Z signal to it, control Z causes the process to go into a stop state. If I take a look at the status of the process, PS minus U, we can see right here that that process has gone into a stop state and is no longer running. If I go back to this window, I can issue from the console the FG command, which will cause that process that has stopped to start running again, basically uninterrupting or continuing the execution of the process that's in a stop state. Knowing the process ID, which in this case is 1560, I can also send a command to cause it to stop from a different terminal. So this is sig stop that I'm going to send and I want it to go to 1560, like so. So I have sent that command to it. If I switch back to that, you see it is now back in a stop state. I can cause it to continue executing by sending it a sig cont to that same process. And now you'll see it continuing on again. If I send it a sig kill 1560, what happens is that process stops running, it's abort, it is killed off, it will no longer be in our process listing here on this tab. So we can use signals to send information from one process to another. Here I'm sending from the bash shell into an executing program, but we can also do this from one executing program to another, sending these very, very simple commands back and forth. A signal handler is simply a function that is invoked in response to a given signal. On screen we see the definition for a signal handler. 
In essence, it's really a function that simply has an integer as a parameter. In this case, the function prints out to the console that a given signal has been caught, where we print out the signal number that has been passed along, and then we pass this number back to the operating system as we essentially exit from the program. This function itself is just a plain old simple function with an integer as a parameter and a void. It becomes a signal handler when we register to a through to a given signal. This is a company or this is accomplished through the signal method or the signal function. The signal method takes an integer definition indicating the signal that is to be handled and a function pointer. This function pointer points to the code that is the signal handler. You can think of this as being very very similar to setting up an action listener in Java where you are assigning an action or an event handler to a given event. The behavior and the concept is very, very similar, though the actual syntax and what's going on is somewhat different. The act of causing a signal is referred to as raising a signal. In the previous example, the signal was raised by pressing the control and the second character on the keyboard. We can also raise signals using the Unix kill command from the console, again as we did in the previous example. When the signal is delivered to the handler, either the default OS handler or an application specific handler will execute the code that deals with the given signal and then essentially return after it is completed. Between these two points in time, here and here, the signal is said to be pending. Essentially what that means is if the given process is scheduled to run, this signal will actually be handled. The first mechanism that you saw in class that really uses this signal approach is essentially the wait method that we dealt with with processes. If we remember when a fork method occurs, we have a parent process that gets spawned and starts executing until it goes into a wait call. This wait, it may be a wait or it may be a wait PID or any one of the flavors that are related. While it is waiting, what is essentially happening is it is sitting there in a block state until the child process here reaches an exit statement or returns naturally. When that happens, essentially a signal is sent to the parent process, causing it to exit out of this wait state and then resume executing. So this mechanism that we are dealing with, the wait PID or the wait, is actually relying on signals to do the communications. There are many, many different signals in the Unix environment. We're seeing them scroll by right now. Basically, each one of these signals has something different that it does and something that it is used for. And each one of them can essentially be assigned a signal handler. Some are more commonly reassigned. Some of them are not possible to reassign to a given signal handler. So at this point, you are able to define the concept of a Unix signal, explain what it is, explain how a Unix signal can be handled, and you have seen some code which is actually involved in handling a Unix signal. That brings this video to a conclusion.